Hello, welcome back to another TFR podcast. I'm here today with Cam to review the steering Grand Prix, which was dominated by Max Verstappen, as he made it back-to-back wins for himself and four wins in a row for Red Bull. So, my question to you, Cam, to kick off this review podcast, is Max Verstappen now the red-hot favourite for the title, if he wasn't already? Well, I think he is. I think he's been the favourite since Bahrain, if I'm honest. Because, mm. well, no, I feel like it's always, it's always going to be close between Lewis and Max. But Lewis has just, I don't know what it is. I said this, I think I said this last week. Lewis doesn't look like he has the hunger as much as Max anymore. Yeah. Max just, he has the fire, he has the ambition, and he has the raw speed over Lewis at the moment. So, unless Lewis comes back next week, then, well, this week. Yeah. Max has to be the favourite. That's the thing. I, I completely agree with that, to be honest, Cam. I do feel um, as the season goes on, we're going to see more of that. And and Hamilton, you know, when you've won so many championships in a row, is the hunger still the same when you've never won one before, which is the position Max is in? But um, we'll, we'll go into the, the race recap. Um, there wasn't a lot that happened let's just say that it was not the greatest race and um, and yes it was a bit of a stinker and uh, I believe the fans even gave it a, a 2 out of 10 um, so it was it was kind of that bad um, but we'll get into the, the race recap this shouldn't take very long and at the very start of the race, it was a clean getaway for Hamilton, a clean getaway for Verstappen, not much change there. But it wasn't clean for Gasly and Leclerc, wasn't it, Cam? What happened there? Uh, I mean, I can say it in a nice way, or I can say it the, the true way. <laughs> so Preferably the true way. <laughs> I'll try to... Well, alright. You're not going to like it. Um, no, that's fine. <laughs> so we've got... We've got, obviously... You've got Max and Lewis, they're fine. You've got Checo, Norris. They're um, and are in whether who's going to get ahead. And then behind those, you've mm, got yes. Gasly and you've got Leclerc. Now, to me, it looks like it's 100% Leclerc's fault. Leclerc mm. goes off... Well, no, they both go off track slightly. Leclerc more than Gasly, obviously. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They rejoin. Gasly rejoins, takes the, the middle of the track, not blocking at all. Um, Leclerc comes on back on track behind, well, sort of alongside his rear wheel, and then sort of sways into the middle of the track, clips Gasly's rear wheel, causing him to get a puncture, and Leclerc loses his front wing. Now, you can argue it, but if you look on the onboards, Gasly sticks to one line, but Leclerc just gradually see is like left yeah and inevitably into yeah i think uh leclerc it was a, a case of him moving too early to tuck into the slipstream and uh, yeah. it was surprising he didn't get really any kind of penalty and uh yeah he moved into gazzy's rear left tire and gazzy got the puncher and as he kind of went into that hairpin he realized yeah i've got no control of the car as it tends to be the case when it's the rear tire that's punctured and uh, and yeah, clattered into Latifi, clattered into Giovinazzi, and yeah, it was a little bit messy uh, in that uh, in that moment. Uh, but the, all the kind of cars, they, everyone bar Gasly actually survived that, and Gasly had to retire in the pits. Uh, but not much then happened for the next kind of ten laps until uh, Lando Norris, um, well, was passed by Perez. And Bottas pretty down quickly, and there wasn't much fight here, wasn't there, Cam? McLaren kind of I mean, accepted defeat almost. He may as well have stuck a big white flag outside his cockpit. Mm. He just sort of. They, they were both. Well, Bottas was closer than Perez, but Perez was so far back. Yeah. Like, even with the outrageous lunge that Norris did on Perez last year, you wouldn't expect anyone to get past from that distance. He just sort of pulled it to the outside, eased off the gas, and let him through. It yeah. was weird, and then same with Bottas. Really, there was no fight whatsoever. Absolutely, and um, and yeah. So McLaren would just settle for that position. They fought 
Ferrari were going to have a bit of a disaster of a day in terms of points. That didn't end up the case, really. They, Ferrari actually outscored McLaren in the end because uh, they recovered pretty well, but we will get to that. And um, we got to lap 25, and Lewis Hamilton had an almighty moment just sure. dipping into the gravel. And this was a little bit of an issue, wasn't it? The kind of tyres in the race and, you know, the overheating. And I think this is kind of why Cam... You know, Mercedes couldn't get near the Red Bulls, not just because of pace, yeah. but the Red Bulls seemed much kinder on its tyres, didn't it? Yeah, well, it was a surprise because they haven't been the kinder of the two all, all season, really. Mm. So to see Lewis struggling and almost losing the car completely, like that could have so easily been put in the wall. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's shocked. It's a good save. Probably everyone. They couldn't have done anything to uh, the cut or anything because. I mean, we'll get onto that at the end, but Max had it covered the whole race. Yeah. Nothing. It was done. Like, there was nothing they could have done, yeah. So and they were struggling on tyres and they couldn't get anywhere near to win. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It was a masterclass, really, from Red Bull and Verstappen, and, you know, they just had every single angle covered uh, because Max was on it, the car was super fast, and, uh, and yeah, they just. Uh, couldn't be beaten but something that wasn't super fast was Perez's first pit stop and yes. uh, it was a bit slow and they tried the undercut well I think more to cover off from Bottas and then in the end that slow pit stop meant Bottas got past didn't it Cam and Perez could never quite find a way back to you know get past him before towards the end of the race it was a very un Red Bull Red Bull mm. <laughs> it, it... You, I, I, I don't remember seeing Red Bull lose a place in a pit stop that they had a comfortable gap over. It's just not what you normally see because I think it was like two to three seconds or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, no, it was it was around about one and a half seconds when they pit him. Mm. So it was he was fine to cover it off, but to lose two, three seconds in the pit stop for Red Bull as well is just very uncharacteristic. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was a very, very slow pit stop by Red Bull standards. And um, next up, George Russell. He ah. was running very high up the order by, you know, the Williams and him, his standards. And it's on pure pace as well. It had only been Gasly that had retired at this point, And he was hanging on to the cars around him. But um, I think it was a drop in pressure in the car. And, uh, and they had came in... Uh, to kind of fill it up if you like and it was a super long pit stop and then they had to come in again and it got to the point where they had to do it so many damn times Cam they just had to retire the car but he's so yeah, unlucky cool. isn't he yeah he's, I mean he's, yeah. yeah the thing is it's a double whammy because yeah he's had the issue he's had the issue now but that sort of we're going back to Austria next week now, if mm. that's something that's happened because it's been rattled around on the track on the curbs, there's no saying that couldn't happen again. And this looks like Russell's best chance that he's ever had in a Williams to score points. Yeah. Now, if that's a, if that's an issue that's just purely been caused by the track, then, I mean, can't do. I'm not sure what it. he could have done though. I mean, yeah. You've got a feel for him because he'll go into next week. And he'll have to analyse everything to see if it, if it was something he could have avoided. And mm. if he can do that, then he's going to have to, if he wants to get points. Well, as he as he was wheeled into the the garage, the obviously his radio engineer, you know, apologised and said sorry and all the kind of usual stuff. And he was like, you know, no, there's there's no need to yeah. be sorry. We we'll go again next week. So. Hopefully, for their case, I hope they can do it because they I, it almost felt like they were robbed of an opportunity because the opportunity very robbed much was there. Yeah, they they were there I, uh, uh, to do it, and um, so yeah, that was a bit of a sad moment, probably the most kind of uh, memorable moment of the race, really. But someone who had a bit of a memorable race for good and bad reasons was Charles Leclerc, and um, we got to lap forty. And uh, he was pinging off the moves. He had just made his second pit stop, I believe. And he really kind of worked his way back up the order. He got past Kimmy via a bit of contact. 
got past Vettel as well and then Sonoda and Alonso and Stroll he really had a kind of crazy race didn't he Cam now <laughs> there's a big pause I know yeah see I know uh, I I feel like he just shouldn't have got driver of the day because mm. if we're going to be honest he was a great comeback but even when he was coming back the moves were some of the moves were very questionable when he yeah. when he clipped Gasly that completely took Gasly out of the race yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Caused Giovinazzi to be spun around and Latifi to be hit due to the contact he caused, and then Leclerc got away effectively scot free. Mm -hmm. We can sit there and go, Oh, look how well he drove. He could have got top five or top four, even. You, you yeah, know, but you've got to remember it's his fault. So, yes, it was a great comeback, but I don't rate the drive because he shouldn't have never had to do the drive mm -hmm. and he should have been punished. For what caused him to have to do that drive? It's yeah. just a massive knock-on effect that hides what actually happened. Yeah, absolutely, and um, and yes, we we kind of it's it's a real tough one when we get to the grading point. You know how, how we're going to grade Leclerc's race because yes, unfortunately that's the kind of way a driver of the day vote works. You know, if someone's been doing the most action and stuff like that, they tend to get it. Uh, but I gave he... mine to Carlos Sainz. Yeah, um, but but even Leclerc said on the radio after the race when they kind of spoke to him with this new thing that they're doing now for the driver of the day, he even he even he said that um, you know it was one of my you know best drives, but also one of the most frustrating yeah. because obviously the kind of stuff at the start, which I think he knows that it was his mistake anyway. I don't think he's saying like Gazi was at fault or anything. Um, you know, because there's been other times before where he has blamed the other drivers, but you know, he didn't. In fairness, he didn't actually blame Gasly. I think he knew it was his fault, and he kind of just got lucky that he didn't get a penalty. And yeah, and it is a shame because he pulled off some great moves. So it's a very much a bittersweet drive for him. Um, and yeah, that was it really for the race. Um, <laughs> real, you know, probably you know in contention with Monaco for worst race of the season which is a real shame um, yeah. because there was just not really anything that happened it was kind of nuts isn't it Cam for a track like you know the Red Bull well, Ring well actually if you think about it Syrian GP last year was you remove year. that you remove that whole Perez loosely his front wing that mm. race was dead it was like that race had nothing to it similar yeah. to this one you, to be fair, actually, though, I think if if Leclerc hadn't tapped him, it still would have been a dead race. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. It's just, there was nothing to it. Yeah, and... Don't get um, me wrong, I'm, I'll happily have Max winning every race, but if it carries <laughs> on, it's yeah. difficult. Absolutely, and there was a hell of a lot of talk about rain before the race. Every damn forecast <laughs> said rain, and it was dry the entire weekend. Not a single yeah. like, well, there was clouds in the sky, but not a single rain drop until literally after the race, which does make you wonder, like, if you know what's what's going on when like it starts to rain, not heavy or anything, but it it, it did literally rain, and then just report them that. Yeah. Um, so let's hope that the rain spices it up for the Austrian Grand Prix, and uh, when we go back to the Red Bull Ring, or, or I should kind of say we stay at the Red Bull Ring for this weekend's race. But um, we'll look at our predictions now. Actually, uh, now I will say beforehand for anyone wondering why some of this is a bit nuts for me, I completely banked on it being a wet race. So that's why some of my predictions are a bit wacky. That might sound like excuses, but um, but yes, that's the reasoning. Um, but first up, we had the pole position predictor, prediction, should I say. And, um, well, Cam, you said Lewis Hamilton was going to get pole. Um, yeah. Now, he wasn't a million miles off, but Max kind of did blow it, you know, blow everyone out of the park, really, didn't he? Yeah, he just, I didn't expect that at all. Yep, and um, unfortunately I said Max, so it's 1-0 up to me. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to last. I've took an early lead here, right. but it's not going to last. I'm about to get, you know, 
Oh, it's the that will lead him the race in Baku, it's not going to last. <laughs> yeah. um, race rating. Uh, um, I said <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> and yeah, that cool. is the jinx right there. And it was voted by the fans uh, a 2 out of 10 race. So even you, Cam, unfortunately, will not get... I don't get... know what I said. Did I say 6? You said 6 out of 10. So you're not far yeah. off. You're, you're, you're the closest possible, you know, that you could get to it. Uh, without getting I mean, it right, no one would have expected it to be that bad. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, especially with the track record with good races at this circuit. Um, the third prediction was who was to finish higher, Aston Martin or Alpine? Now, this was just position-wise, and I said Alpine. Cam said Aston Martin, and vamos. Uh, yep, yeah, Aston Martin did finish ahead of Alpine. Lance Stroll literally. Nine temps ahead of Alonso <laughs> right to the end. Still um, ahead. Yeah, it was. I remember I was watching it and I kind of just noticed it. I was like, oh yeah, I said Alpine. Come on, Alonso, you know, check it up the inside yeah. on the last lap. Just get it. I called it, it would be Stroll as well ahead. Yeah, I you said Stroll would have a good rest. Yeah, and um, so well done to you there. You've made it, you've got the equalizer. And. Um, mm. We both said said the same thing for this one. Who will score more points, yeah. McLaren or Ferrari? And it is indeed uh, Ferrari that scored more points. They scored 15, I believe. Uh, I might be wrong. That might actually be 14. Um, and Lando Norris came fifth and scored 10. So even though both Ferraris finished behind the McLaren, uh, both obviously adding together got more points so that is a point for both of us so it's now 2-2 two, two. as we go into the last two predictions I just will say as well Daniel Ricciardo had an awful race that kind of didn't really oh, help shocking. partly to do with um, a problem midway through the race but we'll talk about that when we get to the gradings um, gap in qualifying I said three tenths you said two and a half now yeah. I will get the exact it was 0 0.226 so well done Cam you've got that by the skin of your teeth it was a close one oh, well I, I had to do the uh, I had to do the play of going half a percent from the other uh... yeah yeah that was that was gonna be a difficult one uh, for mm. me to get when I said three tenths I would have needed Max to even dominate by even more but um, if it was Lewis then maybe you would have got it but yeah yeah, the Lewis never gets followed by short margins. And then uh, last up, we've got the podium prediction. Now, this is where we can get the most points in the bag. We both said Max Verstappen to win the race. So, a yes. point for each. Uh, so, that is now uh, a 4 3 lead in your favour. Second place, I said Charles Leclerc. Did not happen. And you said Lewis Hamilton. So that is now a 5 free lead. And hey. in third place, I said Ocon because of the wet race uh, oh. expectation. And you said Sergio Perez, which you just One missed more up, lap. Cam. Yeah. <laughs> One more lap. Absolutely. So well done, Cam. You have won uh, 5 points to 3. And, hey. uh, and yeah, I believe, uh, yeah, that's the first time you've, you've, you've got a a win in the bag I think we drew last time I think it's time. the second one we've ever done isn't it yeah. yeah so well done you're, you're on it uh, I'll, I'll check by the next podcast uh, the actual <sighs> like standings for that one <laughs> Who, who's got the, the most predictions uh, points together and um, but yeah well done Cam you did pretty damn well this week and um, yeah, I, knew, I knew that as soon as we got to the last few laps I was like you know yeah, what you're like, yes. Perez gets Bottas this is living mm. <laughs> he didn't but you know we're, we're still good we're still good yeah if you get that good of a uh, points tally at, um, for the Austrian Grand Prix this cool. weekend I'll be wanting to know the lottery numbers off you but um, <laughs> we'll get into the, the last section now of the podcast, and that is the rankings, or the gradings, whatever you want to call it, the alphabetical gradings of each driver. Uh, and we'll dive straight into it, because um, there's, this is the longest part of the yeah. of the, the pod, to say the least, but it is the, the funnest part as well. So first up, we've got Lewis Hamilton. He qualified second, finished second, uh, got the fast lap, but was nowhere near Verstappen in that race. 
What are we giving him? B. A B. Solid B. Yeah. Can't no real need that. to explain that. Yeah, not quick enough to catch. The Red Bull just did what the best he could do. Uh, which yeah, was what Lewis second. says when he's not good. <laughs> exactly. Um, Valtteri Bottas uh, next up. Obviously started quite far down the order by uh, yeah. comparison. Yeah, fifth when he actually qualified second due to the free place grid penalty, which, by the way, we've not actually said about. That was completely stupid from Bottas, that kind of spin yeah. in the pits. And, uh, and yeah, got slapped with a free place grid penalty. But he recovered to third, the best he could do, hung on from Perez. What are we going to give him? Uh, I'd give Bottas a B plus, because it was just a solid all-round drive, in my opinion. Better than Hamilton? Yeah. Any particular reason? Uh, just the fact that he managed to improve and jump one of the Red Bulls just helps the team out massively and it's just doing what a second driver should be able to do and although yes he didn't beat Lewis and he didn't have a Lewis pace but he did what he needed to do from fifth, recovered well, actually out qualified Lewis so yeah, you know, yeah. you got to respect him when he does good and you got to knock him down when he doesn't. Yeah, when you put it like that, the fact that he out-qualified Lewis, he did have a pretty good weekend. Um, someone who did have a very good weekend was Max Verstappen. Is this mm. an A+. Plus? Has to be. Yeah. For me, he's actually driver of the day, because I think he didn't put a foot wrong, not a single mistake, and absolutely cruised to victory, cruised to pole position. And obviously there's the car element, but, you know, yeah, he, I'll, not a single I mean, mistake. I'll get on top I'll, I'll, I'll sort of talk about why I've, I've given it to science later on. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. Uh, Perez, next up, um, was running in third after qualifying in P4, uh, after he jumped Lando Norris, but the slow pit stop kind of destroyed his chance of getting the podium because he couldn't quite find a way to kind of get the pace on Bottas, and they tried an extra pit stop at the end, but was, like you say, a lap short of doing it so what we're going to give Perez is quite a, quite a hard one I feel this I'd, I'd just give it the same as Bottas really a B if plus. you think about it yeah yeah because if you think about it if Red Bull did the normal Red Bull pit stop then in my opinion that's a that's a podium for Perez mm. that's all you can ask for that would have been three in a row I think and it's it's effectively the same reason as Verstappen um, no no uh Bottas. Yeah, yeah. Because Bottas did everything the number two should do, and Perez would have done everything the number two should do. And the the fight back at the end was it was it was somewhat of top class. Mm. No average driver could do that. I don't think Albon last season could have done that. Mm -hmm. And for Perez to be able to get that close, it it warrants a B plus in my opinion. Yeah, he literally had to do uh, two seconds all out quicker to catch yeah, him and anyway, he and he was well, very he close. Yeah, exactly. So a B plus, that is fair enough. Uh, Lando Norris next up for McLaren. Now, uh, qualified P3. Uh, uh, sorry, did he? He actually qualified P4, uh, but yeah. started in P3 uh, because of Bottas's penalty, and uh, and yeah, can, when you look at that now, it was a very good lap to be honest, to beat Perez uh, on pace in that McLaren and uh, and yeah, that McLaren was just not as quick as the others in the race and settled for uh, P5 which was probably, the, well, it was the best possible result for them on that day so what are we going to give Lando Norris? B plus <laughs> I, 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 I agree, I laugh easy, because yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, probably. we're going to, I feel as, as a trend, but um <laughs> But yes, I, I agree. You know, I feel like he, he could have done job. better. Like in terms of position, maybe not, but the gap to sick he definitely should have been bigger. Mm. Do you think is it knocking on the door of an A because it was just all he could do? Or is not it really. I feel like if he if he had maintained like a ten second gap all race long or I don't know, the consistency just didn't seem to be there. Yeah. Like, yeah. sure, he was quick and best of the rest in the end, but mm. I don't know. The consistency wasn't there all race at Warren's an A, in my opinion. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Daniel Ricciardo, uh, next up. Now, he made a very good start. He gained uh, about four positions, I believe, 
um, after qualifying yeah. only P13, which was a real shocker um, for him. And then he had a electronics issue or a temporary one midway through the race, uh, which just resulted in a loss of power and it to do with the battery and all sorts of stuff. And loads of cars just breezed past him. And then, yeah, he, he was just stuck in P13 the entire race. Um, so it could have been points for Ricardo, but equally his pace in that kind of car around the other cars that are around him, when you think he got beat by Kimi as well, yeah. it wasn't great. With damage as well. Mm, so what are we going to give him? D plus. I agree. I think we're being slightly be honest, but if if we were sitting there and he had the engine issue, but he continued to push, mm. and he continued to show the pace, then he's merging into a C. But he didn't show any signs of right issue resolved. Let's go get him. Yeah. It, it, it just doesn't seem like Ricardo at all. Yeah, it geez. seems like. It reminds me of Alonso when he went to McLaren. Yeah. It's just the fiery, just hunger of just what Alonso was and what Ricardo was. They're yeah. sort of showing the same thing of Alonso just dulled out and Ricardo is just stuck. He's stuck in a spiral and if he doesn't get out, this could be just career changing. Absolutely, and um, and when you consider what Norris is doing at the minute, it's not looking great for Danny Rank, and uh, he's got to hope that because we've got two races at the Red Bull Ring, he can really make it count um, this weekend, and you know, kind of take take the opportunity. And um, Ferrari next up, so we've got Leclerc who uh, qualified. I have it here. It's P seven. But obviously had that tangle with Gasly on lap one. Uh, had to come in the pits for a new front wing. But recovered well, uh, making an extra pit stop as well. And uh, finished P7 and got the actual F1 driver of the day. So what we're going to give him, uh, Cam. I feel we can't be too brutal about that lap one thing. Because he equally did do pretty mental drive to only finish 10 seconds I know but I'm not that. giving him a B come on you've got to give him at plus. least a B he uh, made so many moves reckless. in that Ferrari it doesn't matter if he got the job done he got, it doesn't matter he got the job done did get a penalty for it if he got a penalty that's a different story I'll uh, tell you what we'll give Leclerc a B because there's one driver on the list that you won't agree with me on later on oh god I'm looking forward to that. Well, 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 it's coming up next. All right, science. Yep. Oh, we're just going straight into it. Yeah, oh, dive hey. straight in it. A. That's fine. That's yeah. not too bad. You so, agree so, with that? Yeah, it's not yeah. that bad. Right. You know, finish. Right. <laughs> uh, finish. You know where he did it was only you know six seconds off uh, Norris. Uh, his qualifying was pretty he, awful. He was my driver of the day because he, he was being held up by Lewis Hamilton. He True. didn't make one motorcycle race. He made the long stint work, overtook strong when he needed to, and he was hunting Norris down. Yeah. It was a perfect drive from 12th to 6th. That, that needs recognising for a good drive. Yeah, for Ferrari, that is a, that's a good result um, to recover to that when at the start of the race they kind of looked a bit off the boil but they extended his stint with Sainz and it, uh, his first stint I believe and it really benefited him um, which caught everyone out I don't think anyone else really tried that and it um, worked wonders so yeah I, I actually completely agree with that um, I thought you were going to say an A plus or something and I was like mm, no, that's been no, too far no, I'm not that <laughs> Sebastian Vettel next up now Ugh. Not the do. greatest. Uh, I shall. Um, so qualify P14 right down the order, really. And uh, when you think George Russell was almost three tenths quicker. That's not comparing to Russell. It's comparing yeah. to uh, <laughs> Russell was just class. Well, Russell well, was ridiculous. Lance was P9, and um, and yeah, he was even quicker, obviously. But um, in the race. 
Yeah, I think they screwed up his strategy, to be fair to Vettel. I did see the radio of his, uh, his radio after the race, and um, he was not happy at all with the strategy. And, you know, they kind of, I think, went too long in certain tyres, a bit too early. And, yeah, it was like a bit of a mess, I think, from Aston Martin's end for that car. Um, so I'm just going to give it a, a D plus to be honest because I think to be P14 to P12 it's yeah, it's fair. just a bit meh and, I think um, it's a bit harsh but that's fair <laughs> harsh but fair I'll, I'll take that <laughs> Lance Stroll next now uh, he right. qualified P9 finished P8 kind of best of the rest he wasn't really going to beat a Ferrari and pulled off a sensational move on Fernando Alonso on the first lap around the outside of turn 6 I believe it is um, or something like that um, uh, in the kind of mill sector and yeah it was a really nice move and just a solid race and hung on from Alonso, Sonoda Raikkonen to that uh, P8 and was the only Aston Martin driver to score points. So what we're going to give him, Cam? Controversial, but I want to give him an A. I'd maybe I I know we've given a lot already, but I'd maybe let's, lean more to be. Let's compare him to. Let's compare him to Seb. Well, he he did far better than Seb. That's exactly. for sure. I honestly, coming from a Seb fan, that was an incredible drive from Stroll to have that car anywhere near like seven. Um, I'm being really hey, impressed mean, but yeah. the way he's from that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I want to stick with an A. I think it's it's quite nice to stroll, I'd say. It's nice because it's it's a very uncommon drive. But he went from P9 to P8. Well, so. Yeah, but what, what, what else are you going to ask from? Well, you gave Science an A and you get, he went from like P12 to P... Uh, six. Yeah, yeah, but he's in a Ferrari. Yeah, but Ferrari's not like, you know, half a minute quicker than, you know, an Aston Martin in a race. I'd say they're a bit closer than that. Um, on pace. And I just making me want to put signs on an A. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's go with B plus. Come on, because <sighs> you can't say Science and Stroll had just as good. Hey, what? If Stroll does the same next week, fair enough. He's on a Ferrari. I'm giving him an A. Oh yeah, if he beats Ferrari, fair enough, yeah. But right. he kind of just got that job done. Um, oh, that's cool. I think something that we can agree on is uh, Esteban Ocon. Uh, oh. This is going to be a pretty low rating. Ever since he's got the contract, he's been awful. And uh, in qualifying, he was 17th. Out qualified by both Williams, both Alfa Romeos. And in the race, did not a lot as well. And... Um, just kind of trundled home to a P14 and kind of was nowhere near points so what is this going to be? I'm, le I'm honestly leaning between giving him an F. I'd agree when you think Alonso but was I'm gonna be honest, points. I don't think it's as bad as one other person so I'll give him an E. An E. That's fair enough. Um, back to back E's though for Ocon. I mean, back to back east for Esteban. It's love, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true, and he's got to get himself sorted. Um, it's almost like the contract's gone to his head, you know, getting that yeah. big money free <laughs> contract. Uh, Fernando Alonso next. Uh, yeah, he qualified. Actually, he qualified eighth, uh, which was pretty good for the Alpine, um, and then kind of finished ninth so dropped position but uh, part of that was because science came through but equally you could say Gasly dropped out as well so what are we gonna go for here I feel this is another difficult one Cam I feel it's just a B mm. I'd probably agree to be honest definitely, he not worth a, definitely not worth a B plus but it's definitely not C yeah yeah, I so, yeah, I like for Yeah, it's the kind of in solid. between almost. Yeah. Um, AlphaTauri next up, Gasly first, and this is a hard one because uh, the, honestly, I'm gonna one. be real. I don't think we can rate him. Well, we've got to give him something. We could well, just give him a bang average C or something. C, and I think we have to do the same for George. 
Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, yeah. But uh, Gasly was P6 in quality, out qualified Leclerc. Uh, now, honestly, his quality, if we were rating his quality, I'd give him a B plus mm. easily, if not pushing an A. But, but he he's out that one. You can't. I don't think you can rate that. Yeah, um, I I agree with that. His teammate though, we can rate him. Uh, P11 uh, on the grid because he had a penalty, I believe. He was actually in Q3. Well, well, let's have a quick look. In Q3, he was P8. That's quite good actually. But got a penalty for blocking Bottas, and um, yeah, had to work his way through the field. And finish P10. So what do we make of that? I don't rate Yuki. You don't rate him at all. I don't rate him at all. No. I think he's overhyped, and I don't. I just don't. I don't see what's so good about him. Mm. And this race wasn't special. This season hasn't been special. I, at best, I'd give him a C. Yeah. He's top ten when Gasly could have been fighting for fifth. You yeah. Know what I mean. I guess he, I mean, he's, been, he's been much better than he has been um, in that particular weekend. Mm. It was no dramas as in spins or crashes. That's because he's been so bad, though. True. It's like Madlapin not spinning in a race. That's a good race for him. Very true, yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't uh, disagree I with that. Um, yeah, I can probably settle with that. Do you think, here's a question for you, do you think Danny Kvyat would be doing far better than Sonoda if he was still in that seat? Yeah. Any idea of how much better, or is that too difficult to say? Let me let me pull up the standings. <laughs> Don't actually know how far behind he is. Well, I might even be able to just get that for yeah, you. I've got it. Oh, you got it. Right. So Yuki has nine points, and Gasly has thirty-seven. Mm. I'm going to be honest. I reckon Kvyat would be there or thereabouts with Gasly. You reckon Kvyat would have 37? Yeah, I reckon it. Wait, what? No, I reckon he'd be there or thereabouts. So be on. So about maybe 30 or something. 30ish. Yeah, he'd definitely be with him. Mm. Like I feel like Alpha Tauri just depending on Gasly to bring it home at the moment. Yeah, uh, he's got to get his act together. Like I mean, he is a complete had. rookie. In fairness, I know, but Helmut shouldn't have fucked him up as much if he is this. Like if this is what he is. Yeah, he needs to bring... I'm sure there's more to him, but at the moment, I don't, I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, he needs to bring back some of the Bahrain kind of driving, because yeah. uh, he was very good in that race, I will say that. Alfa Romeo next, uh, Kimi Raikkonen first up. Uh, no points for Alfa Romeo, but he was uh, 18th in qualifying, out-qualified with his teammates, and so not a great quality for mm. Kimi, but recovered quite well in the race. Uh, to finish P11, I think he was another one that benefited quite a bit from starting on hard tyres and went very long into the race, and uh, but just missed out by about three seconds on points. So what we're we gonna give Kimmy? I think it's your average C plus. It's it's. Mm. I don't know. It's. I don't know what you. Honestly, I'm struggling to know what to expect from Alfa Romeo. They're a hard team to predict, aren't they? They are very hard team to predict. And they're a very hard team to rate. I feel like, mm. in my opinion, they are the hardest team to rate. Because they're right. It, they go yeah. into every weekend different. Just, yeah. They're weird. They're a weird team, and they're a weird just package at the moment. They're they're the the be they're the best of the back markers, but they're the worst of the midfield. Well, it's it is like the fact really that they're back markers, and then being compared to midfielders is just weird in itself. Yeah, it's, they're just a weird team. <laughs> Yeah. It's they're, they're hard to guess. Um, in qualifying, Giovinazzi, uh, the other Alpha Male driver, was 15th. He finished the race in 15th, but did get an almighty hit on lap one from Pierre Gasly. Um, I don't know if he got a puncture from that. I don't think so. No, I don't actually. No, no, I don't think he did because he stayed no. out. I think it was Latifi that put. So he finished 14 seconds behind his teammate, and the next car up the road was 7 seconds ahead, which was Ocon in 14th. So that spin, maybe, I don't know how many, maybe 5, 10 seconds he lost. I don't know, but... no, well, no, because he, he caught up instantly. 
Yeah, so not the greatest it's... race from Gio, maybe. No, not at all, in my opinion. So maybe a D, maybe D plus. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, D plus. Yeah, I'd agree with that one. Uh, last two teams then: Haas, uh, Mick Schumacher first up. Uh, I feel like we need to stop saying Haas over Williams. Over Williams. Well, it's just because yeah. it's in constructors' order. That's all. Um, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, I know what you mean though. Um, well, the the two Hasses were on the back uh, of the grid. There's no surprise there. But Mick Schumacher did beat Nicholas Latifi uh, again. in the race the yet time, again. Uh, Mick's only lost out in Monaco, was it? I, I think, think so. Monaco, yeah. and that was because of an issue. Yeah. So. But, Pretty good from Mick, and uh, Haas were quite happy with him. I, I, I looked at their radio, and they were pretty pleased with his race because it was just nice and steady. Got the job done in yeah. terms of the laps. Um, was only lapped once. The others were lapped twice, as in his teammate and Latifi. And uh, and yeah, it's not like he, you know, was miles off um, Giovinazzi. Even you know, he was only, you know, about what's that? Roughly about 20 odd seconds so it's not like loads and loads i feel like um, you put you put mick in an alfa romeo yeah he has yeah. potential to score points i feel like he beats both the alfa romeo drivers at the moment both Kimi and you. that's the thing it's really hard to guess with mick but the fact he's beaten one of the williams which we know are at yeah. l that they can knock on the I door i mean we have to field. remember that uh latifi did have the collision and he did have the and he had a puncher up. yeah that's very true um, but you know Gat was 20 seconds so um, you know it was not bad from Mick so what we're going to give him uh, B plus C plus that's not too shabby um, his te teammate Nikita Mazmin obviously last on the grid last in the race on terms of the cars that finished uh, but was only uh, eight seconds uh, behind Latifi. Again, Latifi had a puncture on the first yeah. lap, but by Mazepin standards, that's not. <laughs> you know, he's normally about a minute down uh, from the the his teammate or the next car. So we can't be too harsh on him because by his standards, I think it's, it's not too bad. I think it's the same as the Giovinazzi Kimi situation, in my opinion. Mm. D plus D plus. Are we going to just go for in between then? Maybe a C. Well, no, as in I would give Mick the C plus and. Oh, and Maz uh, the D plus. Yeah, yeah, the D plus. Yeah, I, I wonder, will there ever be a day Maz gets above a C? I mean, that Did would be. Did we give him above a C in Monaco? Did we give him a C in Monaco? Oh, quickly flick through. No, we gave him a D in Monaco. So. That's a bit hard. Wow. Maybe one day, maybe one day, Mazepin. Imagine Mazepin scores points before Schumacher. God. Jeez, that would be a shock. That'd be a riot, that one. Um, and last, but by no means least, George Russell and Latif. We've already said about Russell, to be honest, so yeah. we can actually skip that one over. And we finish on the birthday boy of the day we're recording this, uh, Nicholas Latifi. Puncher at the beginning, and. I obviously got beaten by Mick by a decent margin at the end. So has this got a D plus? Might be his birthday, or... but he's eating a fat, just solid D. <laughs> oh god, that's bad. That out does, of yeah, gonna yeah. Move. Steady on, gonna move. steady on. <laughs> right, D, D, but D, but the D. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> uh, that is that for the uh, Styrian Grand Prix review podcast if you've enjoyed this one make sure you give it a like and make sure you subscribe on youtube and follow us on any of your audio platforms we'll be back uh well it'll be either us two or somebody else uh for the preview and the review of the austrian grand prix this weekend and i'd imagine the preview episode will probably go out on friday or something like that but yeah Thanks for listening to the podcast and we'll see you then. Cheers.